Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another inedible, illegible episode of Local Chat. It's an incredible one. I know it's going to be good because one Wilbur's Crispers Hunt 270 ain't here tonight because he's being lazy, I guess, is the excuse. What excuse did he give you, Jake? Uh, that he was working. Yeah, yeah. Heavy air quotes there. Quote, unquote. I bet there's a third excuse. Stop. <laughs> Game stop. They're in the trash now. Their stock's plummeting. Uh, what about what about you, Kyle? What excuse did he give you? He, I mean, he, he, I think he was a little bit more blunt with me. He said something about um, he carries the entire show and he just didn't Jeez. feel like doing it this week. So, you know, I'm a little jealous because honestly, I have, I'm tired and I have work I need to do. So I was thinking about dropping, but then he did it first and I was, damn it. <laughs> Now I have to. And it's like, look, it's a pleasure being on this show. But honestly, one of the best things about local chat is that I don't have to host it. <laughs> and it's it's a little bit complicated because there's the recording and then there's a couple different music cues. And you're trying to make it sound nice because it's a podcast. And so it is a pain hosting it. So I hope you're happy, William. I hope you're happy. Uh, speaking of happy... Uh, let's talk about some games we've been playing. Jake, you're top of the list. How about you tell us what you've been playing, baby boy? Uh, not a whole lot, but I, I downloaded a game from, um, I believe the development studio is just called Dang! <laughs> exclamation point. Dang. Um, Dang. Uh, and I think it came out earlier this year. It's called Boomerang X, published by Devolver Digital, which to me is like the Nintendo seal of approval as far as indie games go um it's really fun it's uh just like a series of arenas where you have to defeat waves of enemies and your only weapon is like a like a boomerang throwing star type thing oh yeah and you can use it for like traversal where you can throw it and teleport to it while it's in the air to get like up the arena and around yes. um, and you can like charge it up to throw it farther um it's very like the the combat is super fast paced but it's pretty forgiving as well um it's super fun um so i would recommend that to anybody who has not played it and there's there's this like big like centipede character that sometimes shows up between the arenas, um, and he'll wave at you with all of his arms on one side. Oh, so that's like cool! Hundred <laughs> arms that wave at you at some point. I love him. I would die for him. I think um, I'm, I think I've had this game like it got a lot of buzz when it came out, and I think I've had it on my Steam wish list. But there is some threshold at when it drops below that I will buy it. But the mm -hmm. problem is, I don't know what that threshold is. So, mm. so one day I will buy and play this game, but I yeah. don't know why I haven't done it yet, to be it's, honest with I've, you. I've been playing it on Switch, so it's also okay. on Switch, if it ever goes on sale there. Um, but um, yeah, super good, super fun. I, I don't know how far I am through it. I've done like six or seven arenas. Um mm -hmm. And I, I don't know. There's not like a narrative to it where I can be like, oh, this feels like I'm getting toward the end of something. Um, so I don't know where I am in the game, but it, I'm having a great time. That's good. While I'm there. Um, then it's the Guardian games in Destiny 2. So I dropped back into Destiny 2 to play a little, grind a little bit more. Um, but that's all I have to say about that. Good. And then I also jumped back into Animal Crossing Actually, New Horizons. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm genuinely okay. curious. What, I, I was going to say. What bullshit, <laughs> what bullshit mode have they come up with now? What is Guardian Games? It's not any different. None of the game modes. There's no like custom game mode or anything. <sighs> it's just the same activities, but you earn medals, like tiers of medals while you're doing it based on your score. Um, and then whatever class of the three classes you're playing, they're all competing against each other um, for just bragging rights. Wait, There's no kind of point is, to it. Is this the same one that's been around for years where you pick one of the like three pseudo factions and you represent them? There's like um, new this future is the third... faction. No, the the faction rallies were just the first two years, I believe. Okay. Um, but 
in the canon, the factions are no longer in the tower. They were all kind of excommunicated for good myriad reasons that we don't have time to get into. Good. Primarily, they were being led by a bunch of space racists. And so everybody went, you have no place here anymore. Um, but no, this is like Sonic and Mario at the Olympics, but in Destiny. You pick one of your classes, Titan, Warlock, or Hunter, and they're mm-hmm. all competing against one another for bragging rights. There's the like the okay. whole rest of the year, whoever wins, there's going to be a little uh, podium in the tower that has the winning class. And then the next year, everybody competes again. Sorry, I, I got excited. It sounded like something new and interesting, but it was no, sorry. I, I'm genuinely on the lookout for a valid reason to jump back into that game and also like a good will, good faith effort to make it easier to come back into that game. And I haven't I haven't seen either yet. So I, I can give a lot of the first reason and not many of the second reason. OK, because the problem is I need both. I need both. Yeah, that's the no, thing. I get it. I totally get it. Well, um, no, I mean, the answer to both is because they haven't hired you, Jake exactly that's why yeah they did not hire me to be screenshot capture artist which (laughs) seems like that would be totally in my wheelhouse that reminds me i was in an elder scrolls online tv ad and by in i mean one day i had to me and a bunch of other testers had to do posing for the media people to do screenshots and and video takes it was kind of fun yeah anyways um You've also got Animal Crossing uh, Horizons on here. Who who Horizons? Is that right? I've never Horizons, heard of this one yeah. before. Yeah. A buddy of mine texted me and was like, "Hey, I just downloaded Animal New- Animal Crossing New Horizons. Can you let me onto your island?" And I was like, "Oh, it's been months. I have to clear <gasps> all the weeds out." Yeah. Um, but uh, I did, and then I I played like four or five times the last couple days, um, just to beautify everything and say hello to everybody again. The yep. island hasn't burned down, so it hasn't descended into Mad Max Thunderdome style chaos yet. 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 <laughs> Man, I look, I don't mean to diss that game, but I feel like I'm trying to think of exa- other examples of games that were wanted for so long. And then they came out and they burned bright for a little bit and then they just dropped. And I feel like. That's kind of what happened with Animal Crossing New Horizons. It feels like everybody loved it for those first couple months. And then it was just, it didn't really have as much legs as people wanted it to. I think there's definitely something to be said for the very time that it came out. Mm -hmm. That a lot of people were still stuck at home and a lot of people were talking to each other about it because there really was not much else going on um but i know that there are still people who play it you know periodically and that's i kind of the original intent of it is to just be it's not supposed to be a grind game it's supposed to be an idle casual kind of play at your own pace play when you want yeah kind of game um and i'm still playing it so it's definitely served its purpose for me having Uh raked in 1200 hours jeez louise speaking of still playing uh ka what games have you been playing uh only one this week so far it is uh the stanley parable ultra deluxe Ooh, is it are you, did you play the original this is your time back or is this your first time i i did play the original um back when it came out i think in 2013 uh somewhere around there is when i played it loved it thought it was great it, it's a if it, for some reason, if you're watching this and you haven't heard of the Stanley Parable or haven't uh, played it, it's I haven't played sort of it, like but an I'm extremely going to. sort of meta. Uh, it it plays with what a game narrative can be, and also what a game can be, and also what gameplay is, and it's basically taking all of the things you're used to, throwing them against the wall, and saying, "No, we can do something different." Uh, but yeah. it's all all contained within. Uh, this this cute little sort of uh, I I don't even know how to describe it as a narrative, but it, it's a looping gameplay thing. So you you do it over and over and over, and things change, or you can make things it's change. Like PT but quirky. Yes, it reacts to you. It's great. Yeah, exactly like PT. Um, it actually does get weirdly creepy sometimes. I I don't know mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys have experiences like this, but do you ever get like a little creeped out or like scared in games that are clearly not like horror genre games 
they're like 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 Half Life kind of does that sometimes, where it's yeah. like Half Life's not exactly a horror game, but there are parts that, of it where it's like this is like this is, is kind of creepy. That is my exact example because I've never played through Half Life because when I tried to when it came out in what was that ninety eight or ninety nine? Well, not mm. Half Life one, but when I tried to play it was ninety eight or ninety nine, and I was eight or nine years old. And I could not get through like the first level and a half because it got too scary for me. It's creepy. Yeah. And it's like there's something about older games, especially when you go into a place that's like, oh, this is like the shadowy area. It's like, no, this is just straight up blackness and I can't see anything. And it's so creepy. And you don't know what's going to happen next because the game has established that precedent of no precedent. Yeah. Um, There there are moments like that. Not not nearly as. sort of intense as as some other games in the Stanley Parable, but it does get a little creepy. There's some just like unsettling on a, on a lighter side of unsettling, but still unsettling stuff that happens. And it's like, oh, this is like weird. And I don't know if I like this, um, but that is, you know, just a few of the the different uh, versions of the of the game that you can play through. And it, it's it's great. The Ultra Deluxe Edition um, is the core game with a bunch of extra added content that they've been working on for several years the developer uh crows 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 they're great um they they tend to make uh like smaller more experiential games but uh stanley parable is by far their like biggest success um and it's it's wonderful i highly recommend it you can i think you can beat it in like three hours or four hours you can do pretty much everything um, mm-hmm. But there is an achievement where you have to not play it for ten years. I was going to ask back. if that yeah. was still in it. So in the in the original game, it was don't play this game for five years. And for the mm. ultra deluxe, obviously you have to up the ante. So they mm-hmm. made it a decade. Um, and there's a bunch of sort of wacky achievements that you can get. With there's like one of the achievements just says like test achievement, like do not do not achieve or something like that. It's mm-hmm. it's it's great. That's cool. Um, definitely definitely recommend it. Awesome. Um, so I'll talk about the games that I've been playing. Uh, so the first one, it's an old favorite now. We can't stop playing it, but at the same time, our schedules don't align well enough, so we only play it once a week now, and that sucks. Hell let loose. I, look, we've talked about this game before. Um, it's a, uh, World War II themed, serious multiplayer milsim shooter you know 100 people on a server but you have a command structure and you have certain things that are limited to roles like most of the pinging system is limited to the squad leader calling in support and squad to squad communication and commands is to the commander etc um but uh, man this game this uh, kyle honestly i feel like you should join us i feel like you would enjoy this i i am more than willing to try um i i reserve the right to uh not enjoy myself because i'm probably going to be really bad at it or something or maybe enjoy myself because i'm so bad at it um but i did see one of your i think mm -hmm. one of the one of the stream titles was like are we getting worse at this game and i was like that that's interesting like how's how's this going but what what is it what is it like for you playing you know it's it's funny because definitely we've we were pretty bad at it at the beginning but i don't i think it's the experience of this game where you can do nothing in a match but because you are committing to that i am part of a squad i'm gonna listen to my squad leader we're gonna cover each other's backs even if we don't see any enemy just the act of like properly tactically crossing a field feels good so even those early matches where we were terrible and literally like getting two kills a match like a 60 minute (laughs) match and we get two kills it felt it still was a lot of fun because you commit to that environment and that atmosphere. Um, There are some bad matches, but the bad matches are when your team is awful and the other team is really good. So it's one of those things where it's like, you don't have anywhere to spawn. So you spawn like really far away. You finally get to the fighting and like the enemy just kills you. Or like by the time you spawn in the enemies like surrounded you. So you're getting shot from like 12 different angles, which doesn't fit with like a realistic military game. Cause realistic military game, you're like the enemy's over there. I'm here. I have a little bit of maneuvering room, but when you really get screwed and the enemy surrounds you, it's not fun, you know, cause then it feels like a meat grinder, but that's honestly maybe only like 10% of the matches where it's, it just feels like completely imbalanced, not because of the game, but just because the other team is firing on all cylinders and your team's doing so God awful that it, it just feels real bad, but part. Mm-hmm. Oh, go sorry. Ahead. Go, go for it. No, I was a transition and go ahead. 
Oh, no, I was just going to say part of what you described sounds like, obviously, it's completely different gameplay wise, but it sounds like the early days of PUBG, where it yeah. was like you could have like a like sometimes I would have matches in PUBG that are like 40, 50 minutes and not a lot happens in the in the beginning and mid well maybe a little bit happens in the beginning but like the middle part you're sort of grinding trying to find stuff get into a good position and then towards the end everything just starts flying at each other and uh it, it gets a little crazy but that part of the experience sounds fun to me because that's that's what i had the most fun with in PUBG. so I'd, I'd be interested in hopping on a stream with you guys i'd be down yeah i mean we're playing every tuesday now so just just i think the only quote unquote problem is the game isn't on sale anymore so it's the full 40 but but you've got the Steam refund period, and honestly, it's 100% worth the $40. It's just a matter of if you personally are going to enjoy that type of game or not. Um, yes. But, um, but it's funny you mentioned that because PUBG is actually a really, really good analogy because it's, they're very similar in that it's not about the shooting. It's more about like the atmosphere, and it's about what you do tactically. Like You can't shoot at everybody because that may alert them to where you are. It's all about positioning and it's all mm. about like taking, taking your life seriously. It's not as punishing as a battle Royale, but it's still like there are sometimes where you're alive for 15 minutes. You don't see any enemies. You're just trying to position yourself properly. Um, yeah. Or, you, you know, you're the only one it's you and two squad mates and the rest of your team can't respond because the outpost got taken out. You're trying to defend a position. Like your life really matters in that point. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, like we've gotten a lot better at the game actually. So part of it is like myself and then Zach being squad leads and gotten better. We've gotten better at um, squad lead opens up some things where you can set down spawn points, not just for your own squad, but also for the whole team. So, but you've got to like do some supplies. You've got to learn how to communicate. You've got to learn. It's not enough to throw yourself in the meat grinder. You've got to position yourself and figure out, okay, are we defending or attacking? Because there's literally like a five, 10 minute travel distance between attacking and defending. Um, but like, like I'll give you an example. We had a really good Tuesday. We had a really good match. We ended up losing the match, but we had so many good moments in it. And one of them was um, we we had spawned in, and basically there was there were two objectives. There's like a d objective you're defending, an objective that's being attacked, and it's kind of this tug of war thing. Mm -hmm. And we looked at the map, and we could basically see that our forces and their forces were kind of in this stalemate between the two objectives. There was this like artificial front line. And it was it was in France, so it was all around these hedge lines. So basically, like the enemy was hiding behind this hedgerow. We're trying to push up against the hedgerow, and we spawn in. We're like 300 meters east of the front line, but still behind the front line. And Zach's like, "Hey, let's let's push north. Let's not go to the front line. It's a meat grinder. There's already like 50 people there. We're not going to do anything. The three of us. So we start pushing north, and I find this trench line, and Will and I end up taking this trench line west. So we end up slightly behind enemy lines, about 70 meters to their flank. So by the time we pop out of the trench, I look and we could see like two or three enemies, 70 meters from us facing completely the wrong direction. And we ended up like, I don't want to say behind enemy lines, but just completely flanking them via this trench system and this maneuver. Mm. And Will and I were like, we're like, okay, I have eyes on him. You see him? You see him? Okay, let's do this. And we pop up and we light them up. We take those two out. We took out like two other guys and we distracted like several enemy squads. And then eventually they killed us like a minute or two later. But by that time, we'd been enough of a distraction and a punishment to them that the rest of our team pushed through the enemy defenses. Mm. And it was this really great moment where it's like 99% of FPS multiplayers are just like literally either a meat grinder or a run around until you face an enemy and shoot them. But this was like literally us making a tactical decision doing small unit tactics, flanking, staying together so that like, like I waited to fire until Will and I were together. Like I waited like 60 seconds to fire on the enemy till Will and I were together facing it. And then we, and then we hit them. And like when it flows like that, like we're starting to do, cause we're getting better at the game. It's magical, man. So yeah, yeah. highly recommending. And then the game gives you the medal of honor posthumously. It does. <laughs> we have this, we have this running joke where the game has no swastikas in it. Uh, the developers kind of made this like decision where you can't sell the game in Germany if it has swastikas in it anyway, so you would have mm -hmm. to have like a separate German version. But then the other way, they were just like, you know what? It's not not every not every infantry unit in, in Nazi Germany had a swastika on it anyways. So <laughs> we're going to be like like somewhat historically realistic, but also just make it easier for us and just not have swastikas in the game. 
and like somebody on Reddit was like, how is this not right? Like it's World War II should be swastika. So we have this funny joke where we're just like, how can we tell who the bad guys are if there aren't any swastikas, you know? <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to play. Um, yeah, so definitely, Kyle, hit us up if you do happen to purchase the game. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think I might. I'm going to I'm going to go back and watch um, the latest stream because I, I didn't get a chance to watch it. But I definitely want to see like, you know, best overall tactics and also how the game like flows. So because I don't, I don't want to jump into it blind on stream. So, yeah, but but I will say the game does do a good job of there are all these mechanics and layers of mechanics like there's tanks, there's artillery, mm. there's the commander, there's the squad leads. But you don't have to engage with any of that. It, there's there's most of the roles in the game don't engage with that so like typically when you start the game you just play rifleman for like 5 10 15 hours until you get used to it and that's that's easy enough rifleman is just like commu- use a mic communicate with your squad and stay with them and shoot it back guys that's pretty much it mm. so, so it's kind of i, I don't want to say it's super easy to hop into because there is kind of a mentality or mindset you have to get into but it's not super complicated um yeah. which is nice but yeah totally um so cool. the other thing I've been playing, have you guys heard of the Magic Puzzle Company? No. It, it sa- well, I will say it sounds slightly familiar. So maybe, but what, what exactly like is it? Like a company that would appear in one of the Saw movies. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly what it is. I played a little game called Saw. Uh, <laughs> you can't you see lived. the lower half of my body for a reason. <laughs> um, no, so the Magic Puzzle Company. I just wanted to give them a shout out here. So... This is from some of the creators of Cards Against Humanity. I think it was about a year ago or maybe even longer than that, that they basically did a Kickstarter and they said, we love jigsaw puzzles, but a lot of them suck and they're a little boring. <laughs> and so they they made three jigsaw puzzles and there were some cool things they did with them, which were like every every piece is different, is unique. So they did not tile some some puzzles, especially larger puzzles. They'll they'll tile some pieces. So some pieces will actually not be unique. They'll be three or four of the same exact shape. So they have unique shapes. They're still roughly puzzle piece shape, but they all have unique shapes. They uh, hired artists specifically to do these puzzles, and it's really cool. Like the one I did was like, it was like a sea with a bunch of different islands. And there were a bunch of stick figures on each island. And I I noticed they did some really cool things where the whole idea is if you get a single piece, you should be able to look at that piece and roughly tell where it is. As opposed to like, it's blue. Oh, that means it's in the top third of this puzzle because the top third is all sky. Mm -hmm. But but like um, all the little stick figures on the islands each island has their own different type of stick figure so like there's one uh there's one island that is all a bunch of astronomers with telescopes so they all have stars on their shirt and there's another one that worship these like giant squids so they all have little squid icons on their shirt so you can look at a piece and see the person on it and go oh they're from this island and kind of put them in the rough area and and even smaller things like i noticed that um everything in the game has a drop shadow almost on it so a lot of stuff, like if it's if it's like water land, you can look at it and tell by the if it has a drop shadow or not, the orientation of the piece. And then even like even like soil, like the soil on the bottom is sand colored, it's really light, and then it gets darker as it goes up the map. So so the, they did all these really cool things so that you can the puzzle it's not frustrating anymore. You know, you don't have these shitty pieces that you're just like, I don't know where this goes. I guess I got to sit here and put these 50 fucking sky pieces together. <laughs> There's no distinguishing feature, you know, um, they, it, that, that doesn't really happen in this, um, which is fantastic. Another cool quality of life thing. They have two, uh, one-to-one size posters of the puzzle in the box. So you pull it out you unfold oh. it, boom, put it somewhere. And there's two of them, assuming there's more than one person working on the puzzle. um, the really cool thing, though, is it's a, the puzzle's also a magic trick. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil the first puzzle, but again, like, it's a physical puzzle. It's, anyways, so I'm putting the puzzle together. It's a thousand-piece puzzle. And I start to realize there are more edge pieces than just the border of the puzzle. <laughs> and, and, and what happened was basically the puzzle was the shape of a normal puzzle, but it was actually three or four separate pieces in terms of there are edges going through the middle of it and cutting borders through the middle of the puzzle. But the picture still matches. 
and there's an envelope in the box that says, when you've completed the puzzle, open this envelope. I was like, okay. So I finished the puzzle. I opened the envelope and it's like, surprise, here are some more pieces. And then it had me rearrange the large pieces of the puzzle. And all of a sudden there's this hole in the middle of the puzzle. And it's like, put these puzzle pieces together to solve the secret or solve the, the mystery, the secret mystery of this, of this, you know, C portrait. And I take the puzzle pieces out and it's not on the picture. So you don't know what you're putting together and you put it together and it reveals that there's actually this like giant squid in the middle of the map. That's like eating all these like shipwrecks <laughs> and is like spitting out gold. And you start looking around the rest of the picture and you're like, oh, yeah, those people were trying to find the squid. And that tribe over here is worshiping a statue of the squid. So it's like this really cool thing where they basically took jigsaw puzzles and they're like, what if we added a shitload of quality of life stuff to it? And we made it so when you finish the puzzle, there's also like a whole extra like escape room type thing of here's one more thing for you. And it's hella cool. Am the I going crazy? After credits. No, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And I think I paid 60 bucks for three of those puzzles. I've got two more to do and I think they're putting more out. Magic puzzle company, Giant man. Giant squid will return. <laughs> Giant squid <laughs> will return. Yeah, so I'm excited to put the other two. I put that thing together in 48 hours by myself. A thousand piece puzzle. I couldn't, wow. couldn't stop. And it, I never got like slowed down because of bad design or anything. So anyways, yeah. hell yeah, jigsaw puzzles. Uh, yeah. Shall we talk about the news? Let's do I think it. It's, I think it's time. Roll the clip. It's not a clip, Jake. It's playing live. Oh. Here's the news, we're talking about news, it's gaming news, what's up news? Thank, thank you, Zach. That's why I, I try and get Thanks, in every time. He's so quick to leave. Um, yeah. he, I, I feel really bad for him. I asked him this week to record. We're trying to get him to, to sing the new version. He did it a couple weeks ago, it was fantastic, but he's a little shy. So this week he still wanted to play the old version of the uh the news theme but anyways we've got some news this first news item hot off the press is it's all about lego that's right the optimus prime transforming <laughs> lego how i don't give a shit about transformers but i think i need to buy this jake it's super cool and it's super cool that it transforms without having to like Take, take it things apart. off and put them back. It do, it does it all itself. I honestly, I think it's very I, cool. It's it's what 160, 170? That's worth it. I don't I, know. I, I didn't look at the to. listing. I just saw the video. Yeah, I think I think it's it's 160, 170, something like One, that. 170. Yeah. Oh, I may have to buy it. There's also it something called so uh, a tack neck, a uh, Horizon Dawn Dawn Lero tack neck Lego. What is this? Mm-hmm. Oh, Jake's That's, frozen. Uh, okay, there we go. I'm, I'm back. I'm back. It's only He's 80 back. bucks, but it's out of stock. Good. Temporarily. 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 I got. I signed up for the email, so they'll <laughs> let me know when it's back in stock. <laughs> How tall is it? Is this? Is it like 16, 18, 20 inches tall? Uh, let me click over to the listing. Because it's only I'll 80 bucks, but it's very spindly. So. It's the aesthetic. Um. Ba, 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 ba. It is uh, 13 and a half inches high. That's pretty nine good. Nine inches wide and six and a half inches deep. Yeah. 1,222 pieces. It's minifig scale. Oh, that's cool. That's cool that it's minifig scale. Because uh, they got a little alloy at the bottom of it. Yeah. I was, I was thinking about they've done Super Mario Brothers, they've done mm -hmm. the Minecrafts, they've done Horizon Zero Yawn, Overwatch. Oh, they did over, but the Overwatch ones, I feel like they had cool figures in terms of like yeah. the Bastion, but the backdrop was like, <laughs> yeah, it seemed pretty half baked. Yeah. I'm curious. What, what other, uh, video game, I, what other video game Lego sets you guys want? Oh, do um, I want? Yeah. Pie in the sky. Uh, that's a good question. I've got, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. They mm. used to do this where. You could use their, I, th I think it was called Lego Creator, the Lego Creator software for the PC, which was like Lego a, Digital Designer. Yeah, Lego Digital Designer. You could do that and then send the the recipe for your for your build to Lego, and they would automatically send you the parts you needed to do that. I want that, but Kerbal Space Program. Ooh, that's oh, not a bad cool. idea. Yeah, you send them your spaceship design, 
and they send you a Lego version of it. I would yeah, love that. Be... What about what I about? Think, be cool. I think honestly, and this is maybe pandering to like the some of the most obvious stuff, but like an Assassin's Creed Lego set would be pretty cool. Like getting to build like a classical yes. monument or something, but like Assassin's Creedified or uh, I could. They did it. just announce a Pyramid of Giza. Yeah, I did see that. You should look it up. It looks pretty cool. I was going to say if they do a Lego architecture. Or uh, Assassin's Creed crossover that could yeah, be pretty. Yeah, I dope. think that'd be. I think that'd be pretty cool. Little cityscape. Yeah. Oh, can you imagine like a Mirror's Edge diorama one? That would be, that'd be pretty incredible. That'd be pretty dope. That would be awesome. Um. Well, folks, let's uh, move on the news here. Ah, <sighs> let's talk about Duke Nukem. Nuke Nukem. Nukem. The Duke of the Nukem. Probably like the most famous case of vaporware that eventually became true. Uh, so quick history lesson, Duke Nukem Forever. I think it got started in 1998, shown occasionally, eventually came out in, I believe, 2013 when Gearbox picked it up and basically turned it around and shipped it out. Well, largely panned, uh, just kind of a promise of a game that just aged and aged and aged until eventually it was plopped out and it was awful but guess what folks somebody has leaked not just footage of an internal 2001 demo but also the build itself and you can now play a very early very limited 2001 demo of duke nukem forever this story is kind of crazy isn't it yeah it seems like somebody has to have violated NDA to get this thing out the door. Um, yeah, twenty-one-year-old um, NDA, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. But um, I definitely would love to see more of this kind of stuff. Like ten years down the road from a canceled game, like ten years from now, if somebody's like, "Hey, here's a build of Scalebound," like that's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm glad that somebody's able to look at this because I do think there is an important like preservationist kind of um, avenue for stuff like this. Um, but that's about where my interest ends. I've never played Duke Nukem, so I don't have like a, oh man, I was looking forward to this kind of vibe yeah. with it. But yeah, same here. It's cool. I, I never, I never really got Duke Nukem. I think it was just too like the heyday was just way before I was even aware of video games. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's so. weird. Cause Duke Nukem was huge from like what? 92 to 95. <laughs> and then it just. Would, would you call it a, like my understanding of Duke Nukem, at least the early Duke Nukem's and maybe I'm totally off base. Just looking at them from a distance was like, Oh, that's a doom clone. Um, but I don't know if that's... I know that the later 3D ones weren't really that. I think it was but. different enough, and it had a lot more attitude and style and pizzazz to it. And it was based on Earth compared to, to Doom. Uh, sure. A lot more, like, realistic Earth stuff. I know Doom 2 mm -hmm. takes place on Earth, but... Um, and so I think a lot of that attitude it. bled through. You know, like, you're, you're having shootouts in a strip club. You know, and you can go into the bathroom mm -hmm. and I think you could even piss in Duke Nukem 3D. So it's like it's one of those things where it was super popular and had a lot of promise. But then that project just bled and bled. Um, and actually, uh, Apogee Entertainment uh, CEO Scott Miller, who was one of the uh, co-designers, co-founders, whatever of the studio originally working on Duke Nukem Forever, basically came out with a statement saying, well, uh, let's talk about the truth about Duke Nukem Forever. And he was kind of just like, look, it was a lack of resources. It was a project that was so slow that every time a new and, and uh, video game improvements and revolutions were happening so quickly that every time a new engine or new tech improvement came out, we kept changing engines and restarting the project, which kind of makes sense. That early 2000 period was crazy. Um, and he said it just kind of languished. They tried to give it to another studio. I can't remember the studio, but it fell through. And so it ended up being sold off to Gearbox. There's still a lot of contention around it wasn't quite sold to Gearbox. It was one of those things where uh, they 3D Realms owed money to Gearbox. And so in exchange, they gave them Duke Nukem Forever. Just kind of this weird project where 
I don't know. I, I, I totally agree with you, Jake. Like, this is this is a bad story. This is a sad story of video game history, but I'm glad we're getting more details and artifacts from it. You know, video game archaeology-esque, mm -hmm. you know? The greatest bit of Duke Nukem content, though, is um, I believe it's the, the voice actor for Duke Nukem took, like, it was like a screenshot from 4chan from, like, a year ago where someone was like, hey, you know, banning Nazis from social media is a slippery slope. And the voice actor was like, banning Nazis is a slippery slope. And I love water slides. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. good. I feel like I need to play Duke Nukem 3. I'm feeling a stream series, you know? Yeah. I it's I played like a little bit of it, I want to say in the mid 2000s, and I remember being like this has like a lot of style in it. Like it's got some cursing, it's got some strip clubs. I think it has tits in it or at least bikinis and I was like, what is happening in this game? Uh my a young teenage self could not handle it. Anyways, um <laughs> next up, we've got some good news, folks. How excited are you for Mario Plus Rabbids 2, Avatar, Frontiers of Pandora, and Skull and Bones? You guys excited for those video games? Skull and Bones is is I mean, I know that early this year I said that um Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga would never come out, and I had to eat my shoe there because it did in fact like the next week they were yeah. like okay it's it's out <laughs> um i don't think skull and bones is ever coming out i don't they actually showed a pretty complete version of it recently which was surprising I know, but i'll believe it when i see it yeah um i i mean I don't really care about skull and bones that much. Weird to say. I just, I, I That's fair. me and you, me and me and Ubisoft lately are just not, I'm not feeling it. And you I'm know, someone look, who, Kyle, I don't be throw you under the bus, but how many hours of Assassin's Creed Odyssey did you play? There's a reason <laughs> why I played. I, I played it because I, it was, I, I will admit the last like 75 hours. I was basically hate playing it. Okay, um, I just I, I have a I have a weird completionist mindset with most open world games and I'm not like oh I need to find every single like question mark thing but as far as the quests are concerned like I want to mm -hmm. do like all, all the quests and stuff and I did that I completed I think 100% of the quests um, so you know I, I did that much to my own uh, stupidity um, but I am really not interested in most of Ubisoft's offerings this year um mario rabbits 2 you know that i know that's like your your thing that you it's love so i've good. never played it i'm it's sure incredible. that i would like it if i did play it but i i'm also sure that like it's better than most ubisoft games because nintendo is involved in making it um and as far as Avatar, I'm actually someone who I, I think a, Avatar is like a great opportunity for a good game. I just don't know if Ubisoft is the company to make that happen. And the funny thing is everybody keeps forgetting. And, and I can't tell if I'm forgetting or making up. There was an Avatar game. I there, think in 2011, 2012. Yeah, mm -hmm. there was. I forget who made it. Uh, yeah, so What's you the story? I... I don't know much about this new Avatar game. Do we know like what kind of game it's going to be, or is it going to be an Assassin's Creed? Like, I think it's like an open world, but then there was some like first person stuff with the flying. Yeah, maybe? I don't know. Mm. Uh, it's called it's called James Cameron James Cameron's Avatar colon the game. Got uh, it. 2009 so, third person Marvel developed by Ubisoft Montreal. Marvel yeah. Spider-Man Miles Morales. Yeah, I want it yeah. to be James Cameron's Avatar 2, The Way of Water, the movie, the video game. The video game. In yeah, Papyrus. Yeah. Yeah. In IMAX. Yeah. In IMAX. <laughs> um, I, I got to say something, though. Like, I wasn't a big fan of Avatar when it came out. I thought it was okay. And then I fell asleep the second time I watched it. But there is... I don't know what happened. But y'all, that second trailer... The trailer for the second movie has me hyped, and I great. don't know why, but it looked great. I, I'm loving I it. I tweeted at Jake because Jake is. I said this in my tweet. Where I was like, Jake's my litmus test for most things science fiction. Um, I can form my own opinions, but I'm also like, what does Jake think? <laughs> and I saw Doctor Strange. I saw it in IMAX, and that trailer is sp specifically formatted for IMAX, and it is like 
it was so good. Like mm-hmm. the the music, it just the tonally, it set everything right for me to be like hyped for this movie. Yeah. And I I enjoyed the first Avatar movie again. Not the best story, but it wasn't really about the story. It was about the technology. And it was the about the visuals you know, and the world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was about the experience of of being dropped into that world, which I think it knocked it out of the park. And never bet against James Cameron when he's in the director's chair. So I'm and I'm a James and... Cameron sequel. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Those tend to be very good. Yeah. And I think I mean even just from the teaser or whatever. Of course, we're totally off track from the video game now, but it does look like a new high watermark for all digital characters. Pun intended. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I will say I completely forgot the the key part of this news announcement, which is that Mario Plus Rabbids 2, Skull and Bones, and the Avatar Frontiers of Pandora are all set to still release by March 31st of 2023, according to Ubisoft's earnings report today. Which is pretty solid news. That is what they are saying to shareholders. They could, if they are lying in that, deliberately lying in that, or withholding information, they could be sued for it. So I, I mean, uh, I between the, this Avatar game, which honestly looks kind of good, between Mario Plus Rabbits, which should be incredible because it's the same team as the first one, and the first one was great, and Skull and Bones, which could could be pretty good. I mean, honestly, the problem it isn't. Looks nice. Yeah, the problem isn't what the game is showing. It's that it's not showing often enough to make you mm-hmm. believe in it. Because that I've, announcement was yeah. forever ago. I, I feel like this is this is a pretty good lineup through March 31st from Ubisoft. And to transition, the reason why I'm so heavy on that <laughs> is because be- March is insane. Not just because of March, but because two big releases for 2022 just got delayed. Redfall and Starfield from uh xbox studios bethesda and i don't know i'm 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 honestly not that surprised by either of these what do you guys think no there was no way both of those had we had only seen cg trailers for them we haven't seen gameplay from either there was no way they were coming out by the end of the year yeah Yeah. the Um, the whole the whole sort of marketing campaign just for i mean i haven't seen anything for redfall that i can that i can like remember um and the stuff for starfield that they've that they've released is all just developer behind the scenes like talking heads sort of documentary-esque style interviews and i was like where's the gameplay Mm -hmm. what's going on so there's there's no way this wouldn't have happened yeah so this is a good point to bring in kind of i've been waiting for it yeah (laughs) Yeah. this is a good point to bring in um there was a leak on reset era I believe it was about a month ago from somebody who claimed to have worked on Starfield. It 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 had some it sounded like a true leak, but there was no confirmation behind it. But now that we've got the delay, some of this is starting to make sense. So again, this is a leak, it's unconfirmed. But they said um about Bethesda and Starfield, it was a cool, solid place to work, very secure. The engine is a piece of crap though. Todd is a charismatic is. guy for sure. Starfield is looking good. Weekly Thursday playtest since the beginning of the year. More and more stuff coming online. Shooting feels all right. Flying is terrible at the moment, but it's just not fun for me. Lighting and stuff is looking better and better, though it's not on the level of Horizon Forbidden West or anything like that, but it's still a good looking game. In terms of if it will ship on time, well, they will try. That's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> They'll cut what they need to, etc. They have an overabundance of content, probably too much. So that's not the issue. Finding the fun and, of course, bug fixing is the big thing. It's a sexy date, though, and you only get one of those. Beta is this summer. That's when the picture will truly become clear. I feel like this is one of the... This Again, the sleep was a month ago, and this was the first time people were trying to look at it and go, it may miss this. It may miss this date. Um, yeah. I'll just say, again, as somebody who has worked QA as part of the uh, Bethesda system before at ZeniMax Online... Them delaying a game, honestly, for me, is good news because their number one problem has always been they crunch QA, they don't give them enough time to find bugs. When they do find bugs, they don't fix them because they have to get the game out the door. And then it's shit at launch and for the next couple months. So them delaying gives me a little bit of hope that maybe they're finally taking QA seriously to give them time to test and fix the bugs that they find. So... Sad news, but overall good news. It's just weird, man. 2022 is... What do we have left for this year? You know? What's the tentpole? Where's the cyberpunk? Where's the Halo Infinite? What's the what's the big ones at the end of this year? So many questions. 
Are there any more big tent poles through the end of the year? I can't think of any off the top of my head. Well, someone tweeted a reply to this announcement, and they were like, "This just paves the way for the new WWE game to like take all the accolades that yeah. are coming out." <laughs> the only one I can think of is um, Gotham Knights, which did get an October release date. Um, Wait, I thought yeah. maybe I'm I'm there's two games seeing two news stories close to each other. There's two games. Suicide Squad uh-huh. got delayed. Gotham that Knights might, that is still That was like yeah. a month or so ago. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. But, but we could jump ahead and talk about Gotham Knights. Uh, it got a new gameplay trailer, October 25th, 2022 release date. They did announce the cancellation of the PS4 and Xbox One versions because basically it's old gen. Why hold the game back? Which is funny because I don't know if you guys saw this gameplay, but this game don't look good, y'all. Y'all happen to see it? It, it looks worse than Gotham Knight or Arkham Knight. Like, yes. It looks worse than that game. Is it and Rock it, City? No, no, it's um, some other. I, I can't. I can't Hold remember. Um, I just don't. I this wasn't a game that was I was gonna play anyway. It's WB but, uh, Montreal. Yeah. Oh. No, it's just it's funny because like I watched a little bit of the gameplay, but the, somebody posted an image of like the character screen and it shows your stats. And I looked at the image and I swear to sweet baby Jesus. This looked like a mobile game. It looked like a mobile game. Like the whole UI, the UI. is blown I did up. see this. It's yeah, cheesy looking. That. And I was like, how is this a next gen AAA title when it looks like, imagine that UI on your 60 inch TV, which is like a standard size now at 4K. And it's like, what the fuck am I looking at? You know, not every game needs RPG elements. No. No, yeah. but it's there's some people. So many people are leaning into that, and I don't know if it's the success of the commercial success of something like Destiny, if that was kind of the like the leading edge of people being like, let's no. give people a bunch of loot or Borderlands maybe. Maybe Witcher. I, um, I think part of it is it's also an easy way to keep your 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 gamer engaged, your consumer sure. engaged, is you give them a number and collectibles that they have to use to get to get more versus just bursting through, you know content but what how, what about just like an upgrade tree instead that's, of like that's rpg too? armor yeah. and i guess that's true but but i agree that you don't need you don't need big numbers and no yeah i mean honestly i was kind of excited for this game because i have had a bit of like a like a batman arkham itch lately because that is some good gameplay um but I don't know about this, man. It didn't look that good. And just the UI design, et cetera, was iffy. What, what I don't understand is the very first gameplay demo that they sent out um, a year or two years ago. In 20, this is saying August of 2020. Um, the combat looked more fluid <laughs> than it does in that the was current. Like, this, like the stealth with like Nightwing. And yeah, like it was. It was yeah. I think it was Batgirl. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like. Obviously, it, it they were pulling more RPG elements where like the guys had health bars and then like you would you would click away at them as far as like it was completely different from the Arkham games. Um, and I didn't like that immediately was like turned off by that because I was like, I don't I, the the combat flow and and pacing of the Arkham games is what made that game so fun. And you could tell when an enemy was down because like the sounds would change yeah. or if it was the last enemy in an area, you do a finisher on them. And this is just like, Oh no, there's now clusters of little guys everywhere. And they all have like different. Th- I forget what they said in this newest gameplay demo, but they're like, Oh yeah, there's different like challenges you can do in each specific area with each cluster of enemies. And I was like, I don't like that. I don't yeah. want that at all. And I just don't, I don't know who this game is for other than like the hardcore, like DC fanboy or girl yeah um, it feels like it feels like they came off of arkham knight and they said let's take some years let's do something new and halfway through that process they were like actually you know what we can squeeze two games out of this two two different ideas two different teams same basic gameplay but two different variations of it and i understand that and honestly the bar was pretty low for me to pick up this game and play it because like i said i've got that itch right now but they it feels like they beefed this gameplay trailer it is not showing well hope it i hope it plays better yeah, I mean they've still got time. I just, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm not interested in playing it. I'll, I mean, I'll I, wait. Um, I will be happy if they, the reason that they've canceled the 
old gen version beyond the you know maybe it won't sell as well is to give the team more time to focus and polish the current gen version and not have to worry about you know i don't know anything about game development what if if that's not clear i was just sorry i i I was paying attention to you but i also had a little bit of a daydream about (laughs) i think the batman (laughs) game i want right now is point and click full motion video the batman with robert pattinson that's what i'd be down i'd be into it the movie was incredible so just give me that but as a point and click adventure hell yeah let's do that and then you and then could, you could do that if you just rip the blu-ray <laughs> damn it jake then... <laughs> i'll fucking do it too well i want i want that game for the detective parts but then a really solid like racing sim with the Batmobile yes. from that movie but then yes yes <laughs> yeah man anyways get the 4k blu-ray Rip it. Get like screen grabs of the <laughs> wide, totally like could. establishing shots. I know it's very easy. I have like twenty five percent of the programming knowledge just needed to do it. Dump it into Unity. I don't. I don't think I even. I'm pretty sure I could just do it in HTML five. <laughs> easy. You could do it on a do it on a website. Shit, Jake. I don't want to do this. <laughs> I got too many projects going. Anyways, <laughs> let's get some good news going. Folks, turns out that the Need for Speed franchise, the future of the Need for Speed franchise, now lives with Criterion Games and the development team at Codemasters Cheshire, who are coming together to form a new Criterion Tool 2 Studio system. Uh, Just a little bit of background here. Criterion of Burnout fame, specifically Burnout Paradise, consider their magnum opus, and Codemasters Cheshire who has been helping out with Codemasters games, but also from the MotorStorm series, which is another well-known and well-beloved uh, racing series. I, for the first time in a long time, I'm, a, I'm optimistic about the future of Need for Speed. What about you guys? Yeah, Codemasters does Dirt. They do Dirt. I think they also do Grid. They also do F1 grid. series. They do but good are those racing other, games. Are those other Codemasters yeah, I think those other Regional Codemaster Studios. studios. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm I'm into this. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. I'm 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 down. Yeah, I just realized that I believe that I believe Codemasters was purchased by EA for I think it was like 1.3 billion or four times what Embracer paid for the Western Square Enix studios and their IPs, including Tomb Raider <laughs> and Deus Ex. God, they sc- and then the Long. NFT market crashes a week later. God, I love, I love this world. This is the so this, good. <laughs> this is the best timeline. Uh, anyways, <laughs> um, I'm glad we don't have Will here. Otherwise, he'd be talking about Dead Space again because we have a release date for the Dead Space uh, remake, January 27th, 2023. Jake, you're excited. Look at the hands go. I absorbed Dead Space through cultural osmosis when it first came out, but I've never actually played it. So Same. the, Same the announcement of a remake for a console that I might actually be able to own and play it on was very exciting and so i'm i'm pleased that there is a um an announced date for it that seems reasonable maybe it seems doable yeah i mean they've been showing a lot of dev stuff and they they are making progress i will say i'm right there with you never played it heard a lot of great things about it will replayed it in the last year and i think had a lot of a lot of really great things to say about it he replayed all three i think and then watched like the anime movie or whatever i'm not sure that i will ever be able to emotionally play this game but i am excited maybe maybe we'll just do uh spooky pixel 2023 is will plays through this game while i watch i think that's doable it's just yeah. like even just Everything anybody ever told me about it, anything I ever saw of it, I was like, it's just checking off like every box of yeah. like Jake's personal list of sci-fi I want. But we um we did something. I think it was for uh, the old site that we all used to work for uh, with something to do with Dead Space Extraction, which was a we rail shooter <laughs> Dead Space experience, and I, I played that, that game. It was not bad. Like for for a Wii rail shooter, it was pretty good. Um, and it actually has pretty good ratings too, weirdly. It does seem um, like an IP that would cater well to a rail shooter. Yeah. Yeah. And then so we 
I, I played that game and I, I'm not sure if I reviewed it or if I, I wrote some sort of an article for it way back in the day. Um, but then me and my friend played the first like hour of the Dead Space 3 co-op. So like I've I've played like the worst possible parts of the Dead Space series and I'm really interested to see this remake and or or whatever it is and uh and and get my hands on it but then we also we we did a documentary on uh outpost games for mm-hmm. game a bunch of them were yeah and a bunch of them were, were visceral visceral oh alums. yeah visceral um one of the guys worked specifically was like a tech director on on dead space and we asked him about it and uh it was great i mean he said he said it was a really cool experience being there so i am all for getting onto the dead space hype train uh and and doing some sort of a spooky pixel series for it i think that'd be great cool well let's end this with some great news which is that fifa has finally ended their 30-year partnership (laughs) With EA, oh I, boy! I, the only reason why I think this great is great news: FIFA has finally ended. <laughs> I, I just like I feel like this is great news because uh, fuck EA, but also fuck EA's like football ultimate team, which is basically just their like giant money laundering gambling operation they run. Um, so let's let's hit some details here, and then we'll get some reactions. FIFA and EA had a 30-year partnership where they were making FIFA titles. They were paying for licensing agreements from FIFA. The claim is that over the last year, FIFA has basically said, hey, you know how we normally charge you $150 million? Now we want you to pay $300 million a year. And EA basically said, F off. And so now they are making EA Sports FC, which stands for fans of Chelsea. FIFA claims they're going to make their own game. And I got a quote here, and then I'll kick it over to Jake. This is a quote (laughs) from the FIFA president. Upon hearing of, that EA Sports has announced EA Sports FC as the future of interactive football, FIFA president said, quote, I can assure you. Should I do this in an Italian accident? His name Please. is. I was going to say it needs to, be, it needs to be. I can assure you that the only authentic real game that has the FIFA name will be the one best one available for gamers and football fans. That's from uh, <laughs> FIFA president Gianni Infantino. So there is like a there's a football video game fight and I'm all for it. This is going to be fun and entertaining. What do you guys think? Were you throwing out those licensing numbers as hypotheticals or is that actually what was was, being paid to license the FIFA? That was the rumor. That was the rumor. The leak from a year ago was basically they pay 150 million a year for the license and FIFA said double that or we're walking. That's crazy. Are they making? They've got to be then making at least that much back easily because the, the, the I think they literally make like uh, I want to say at least a billion. I mean, they make a shitload of money off off Ultimate Team, like an crazy. insane amount. I feel like it's like ten, twelve million dollars a month. Like it's crazy how much money they're making. Yeah, but it's not Mario Strikers. <laughs> so why would I play it? I that's coming out on June tenth, y'all. It's right yeah, around. Yeah, it I is. Forgot about that till I saw it today. I can't wait. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Um, secondarily, the m- most successful one of these is whichever one is gonna do a Ted Lasso DLC first. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sorry. I'm just like I'm just trying to think if I even give a shit about that. I mean, <laughs> I don't. I don't either. That show is is milk toast as fuck. <laughs> it's uh, charming. It, 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 yeah, charming. Charming is the right word. I, I thought would, the second season was worse than the first season. Yeah, yeah. But. I would say charming to a fault. <laughs> sure. Um. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I know it's hard to get excited about this because as Americans, we only appreciate American football. Um, the only the LA Galaxy. Yes, that's correct. That's the only team American I could football. name. <laughs> the LA Galaxy. I just, I find this funny because it's always funny when there's like huge money at stake with something that you just don't give two shits about. You know, you're just like, hey, y'all having a money fight over there? Who cares? <laughs> the only thing I'm interested in is like, what is FIFA, the organization, going to do? Like, are they just going to be like uh, Ubisoft? Like, they'd have, uh, yeah, they'd have to contract two K. Like, who, who do, you, who are they going to pick? Who yeah, are they gonna I, point can see, at? I can see them doing two K, but and two K would be like, yeah, we'll do it. Retro Studios. Well, there is um, is it Pez? Is it Sony that has Pez, or is that Konami? I think that's Konami that has Pro Evolution Soccer. <laughs> I don't. 
I'm trying to picture the Konami logo coming up in front of the FIFA logo. And yeah. It just I doesn't feel good. That since defunct studio um, uh, Silicon Dreams, no. Uh, no, that's the answer. Don't make it in dreams. <laughs> they could make it in dreams. I'm trying to remember who, who made um, Lego Soccer. Um, oh, God. From like. Like it, always, it always comes back to lego there's always a lego game my encyclopedic knowledge of lego games is failing me i i Digital just design interactive i think was i don't know i mean can i ask you a question like so outside, dream. outside of the good soccer games like mario strikers and inazuma 11 would you guys genuine question Rocket here, League. would you yeah would you ever get excited about a realistic soccer game soccer video no. game no, no, sports no. boring. I, yep. I genuinely look. Madden this is, don't care. This is 2K, not me. Basketball yeah, don't care. This is not me being an American. I'm being genuine here. Like I don't understand how soccer slash football became so popular in the world when it's a boring sport. It's not even that fun to watch. How did it ever get that popular, man? Especially when like, uh, sorry, to back to video games. The arcadey versions are so much more. Fun fun yes yeah. you're i mean even like even older ones like like the backyard sports franchise where it had like love arcade those elements that yeah. made it really fun um and rocket league kind of taking this mashup of like demolition derby meets soccer um why would you play what about like version? uh benny fought it's fifa soccer <laughs> <laughs> what would that it would be awful. It would be a, it would be a co-op. It'd be three D co-op. Is what it would be. It would be a nightmare. But how it's it's what it's ten multiplayer yes. co-op bodies. If trying we want to get to knock the ball across okay. the field. Sorry. Yeah. We want to get real effing crazy. It's f- it's forty players per team, one per limb. <laughs> <laughs> like um like a co-op uh, Octodad. <laughs> Yes, yes, but I'm sorry. Each person has two people, but on opposite teams. So you can either play the legs of your players or you can play the arms of the other team's players trying to get handballs. We're cooking something. We're cooking something up here. I mean, I think that's good. I'd be more interested in a Daniel Mullins soccer Mm, game. Yeah. I would. Yeah, or just give me sports story. We know sports story exists. I'm pretty sure there was soccer in that announcement golf trailer. Story. Yeah, Go- there's golf story. Their sequel is called Sports Story, and it's more sports. And right. golf story right. is the greatest golf game ever made. It's fantastic. It's very, very good. Hey, let's up the point being for monkey ball, Had super monkey mode. ball, super monkey football. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we gotta we gotta wrap this shit up. All right. Folks, thank you guys so much for joining us. We've had yet another incredible episode. We, see, we didn't need Will. We got to the end. We're right on time. We did it. Uh, Jakes, thank you so much for joining us. Any closing thoughts? Um, no. Okay, that's Wait, perfect. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that's perfect because we're going to keep it tight. Kyle, closing thoughts. Uh, closing thoughts is that Adobe products are way too expensive. Yes, that's right. Uh, folks, you can find us at subpixelfilms.com. That takes you right to our YouTube page, which has all of our local chat archives, stream archives, and plenty of edited videos. We've done documentaries, uh, critical pieces, etc. You can find us at, at Subpixel Team on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. You can find me on Twitter at Think Gibson. You can find Jake at Twitter at underscore Jake Terrio. And you can find Kyle on Twitter at Kyle the Beard. Folks, we made it in time, which means I get to get, leave you with this little nugget of wisdom. Football is a boring sport. 